Player anger and frustration over Festival in a Box and the amount of booster packs it's going to put into the market have even more players turning away from sealed product. In today's video, we're going to discuss what's happening on the market and, of course, the continuation of the singles market, which is still doing surprisingly well. I've got to give it to Wizards of the Coast. They know how to pick a fight. They know how badly they want that money and they are willing to go for it, regardless of how many people it upsets and the numbers are starting to mount. Welcome back everyone. MTG Moxman here. Thanks again for hanging out with me on the channel and it really shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody out there that that festival in a box was gonna have repercussions. When you realize how many packs they had to open to get there, how many boxes they had to open, how much extra product was sitting on their shelves. We talked about this in last week's video and then you get to that point where you're a person who maybe has enjoyed sealed product in the past, you've gone ahead and said, I really enjoy this stuff. I believe it's going to have value for the future. And then finding out, you get a slap in the face because they know that you know that it may have value in the future. So they just kept printing it. And they printed it and printed it. And by the way, they printed it some more until you feel just drained, exhausted. And that's where we're at, at the moment. Wizards of the Coast in the quest not, not, not Galaxy Quest. We're in the quest for money here. It's a whole new series. And all they do is do whatever it takes to get money. The long-term implications of what they're doing will not be felt for quite a while still. But I know that myself, my friends, there's so many of us who have been turned away from sealed product other than Lord of the Rings and a few smattering of boxes here and there. But nowhere near the powerhouse juggernaut sales that we used to contribute to Wizards of the Coast pocketbooks, to our local LGS, to the distribution network, the hundreds of boxes that me and my friends would personally buy each year has ceased. I can only matter, only sorry, I can only imagine matter. I can only imagine. If I'm talking hundreds of boxes between me and my close network of friends every year, how much is out there with my patrons? with the fans of this channel, with the fans of other YouTube channels who just don't even stop by and say hi here anymore. They just, they evaporate into the aether and they only come by once in a while and they don't even bring pizza. When you look at those people and how much they used to buy, Wizards of the Coast is going to notice it sooner or later. They are going to touch on this and they are going to see that the singles market is still doing very well. Not the sealed product, the sales will just slowly be slowing down. They're going to notice by the end of Q4, because all these stores who said they're going to buy less, and yep, all my stores that I've contacted, they're all still buying less. They're going to notice that everyone's gearing down. They're going to think, because, you know, Wizards has had this kind of situation before, they're going to think it's wallet fatigue and it's the fourth quarter. That's what they're going to think. That's what some higher up beanie baby is going to tell them, that everything is okay. This is just the fourth quarter. But there are going to be some people saying, you know what? I don't know if you guys have been reading all the reports we sent you about what's happening out there. But distribution has already been scaling back for a little while and we've had lower sales. I would love to be in that conversation. I would love to sit there on that board and tell them what they're doing wrong. That's why I put that video out, The Ugly Truth, to get them there. If you missed that video, go watch it. That's what I think should happen. And I look at this now. I look at the players contacting me saying, ah, you know what, I'm looking forward to Bloomboro, maybe Modern Horizons 3 for a box here or there, individual packs, of course, but I'm not, I didn't really dive into Eldraine. I bought singles. I didn't really dive into basically every set. I've been buying singles, and that's where we're at. The singles market is still doing well. Now, Wizards of the Coast, if they feel that the boxes aren't giving them the money, if you don't think they'll go direct to consumer with singles, They'll just evolve into a new beast and they'll do direct to sale for singles. They will do whatever it takes to keep that money machine churning. And as scary as that sounds, oh, it's going to happen if things keep going this way and the box prices collapse, but the singles do really well because boxes aren't being opened, the prices get suspended. This is, it's crazy to think about, but it's all supply and demand. It's the basics of economy. There's supply, there's demand. If nobody's opening the supply and there's still demand, the cards that are being opened are going up in value. 
direct to consumer, just like Secret Layer, but they'll do individual cards. It's gonna get scary on the path we're on. This path is this is like a game of Pitfall from Atari. Atari style, man. You're just jumping over, hoping you don't fall in the pit and get eaten by a crocodile at this point. But it's really fun to be there. It's fun to be there because it's still an amazing game. I play it all the time. I play basically almost every day now. No, not arena, but in-person magic with some people at work on our lunch breaks. And you sit there and you try things out and you just have some kooky fun. 60 card decks, kitchen table magic style. Anything goes, but we've got it in block era. So you got to use, you know, things from 96 to 2001, that kind of thing. You know, we're having some fun with it. But you're playing the game still every day. And you realize, I've already bought cards. If they don't fix it, I don't have to buy what they're offering. I can wait. And the waiting leads to Amazon dumps. And we know it's happened time and time and time again. And this festival in a box may be a short-term half measure. But players, we were all on to you as soon as they did it. I called it out in a video before everyone. I said, see, this is what's going to happen, and here we are. So let's get to this singles market. Let's take a look at the hottest selling cards in Magic. I think you're all going to be surprised by the amount of sales we're still seeing for things like Lord of the Rings. But finally, Wilds of Eldraine is showing some signs of life, slapping things around a little bit, and getting themselves wedged in there. So let's take our trip down here. Let's see what's going on. Let's get the party started, and we're going to start at number 10. Starting out at number 10 is Spreading Seas Wilds of Eldraine Enchanted Tales. Now, when we take a look at this card, it has 3,012 sales in the number 10 position this week. The market price for this card is only 10 cents. The average price value is 25 cents, and it's 35 cent euro to get this card into your house. Here in Canada, you'll be looking at about 50 cents per card. And in case you haven't seen this artwork before, it's because it's new. The card itself is, of course, a reprint card, but that artwork is brand new and looks gorgeous. Now, when I look at this card, it says Enchant Land. When Spreading Seas enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted Land is an island. A nice little utility card lets you draw a card, gives you a little bit of mana, you know, context if you need to build with different colors. This is not a horrible card. I don't see having as much play in decks I use, but that does mean that other people may not find value in this kind of card. And at this price point, buying four of it for a dollar is not a big deal. Now, number nine this week is Questing Druid. And again, this is Wilds of Eldraine. When we take a look at the Questing Druid, you can see it has 3,472 sales this week. The average price tag is $2.72 US. The market price is $2.10. A foil, $2.62. And it's one euro 88 cent to get this card into your house. Here in Canada, it's around $3.50. Now, this card is a one green, one generic for a one one. It does have an instant adventure for one red, one generic that says Seek the Beast. Exile the top two cards of your library. Until the end of your next end step, you may cast those cards. Whenever you cast a spell that's white, blue, black, or red, put a plus one, plus one counter on Questing Druid. So you can pump the card up, and of course you can get a little bit of a, a draw ability if you need to, assuming you have mana flow to let you cast it before your next end step. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the number eight card this week. And this is generous and from Lord of the Rings hanging in there with 3,582 sales, which is around what it sold last week. But overall, there's just so many higher sales this week that this guy got pushed down the list. Now this card still continues to trend at around 40 cents average. The market price is 23 cents US, a foil, $2.47 US, 33 cent euro, and around $1.50 here in Canada. And of course, this card could be your big beastie blocker with reach. If you're late in the game, but early in the game, this thing can give you four cycling for one, which makes your mana so much more available, which is an amazing card. I can see why all these cards are still selling. Now, number seven this week is Preordain Magic 2011. This card had 3,792 sales this week, September 9th to the 15th of 2023. The average price tag is $2.99. The market price is $2.40 US. And you can see it's $56.51 for the foil version. I would not be buying that version of it. And it's €1.78 to get this card into your house. Around $4 here in Canada, depending on what version you're looking for. So keep your eyes open. And of course, if you don't remember this card because it just got unbanned, it is Scry 2 as a sorcery for one blue. It says Scry 2 and then draw a card. Okay, so it's kind of a nice card to have around. Give you that ability to kind of shape the deck the way you need it to be. 
Now, number six this week is Stroke of Midnight, and that is Wilds of Eldraine with 3,829 sales this week. It has an average price tag of $1.26 US. The market price is $1.18 US. A foil is $1.50. And of course, it's 93 cent euro to get this card into your house. It's around $2 here in Canada for a one white, two generic instant that says destroy target non-land permanent its controller creates a 1-1 human creature token. This is a pretty nice card. It's not a Swords to Plowshare, but of course, it does let you pick a non-land permanent, so it gives you lots of opportunities and lots of targets to pick from. I can see why this card is having a major upswing in sales. Now, number five this week is Not Dead After All. Sounds like a horror movie. And we're getting up to October, so it's going to be kind of good. Wilds of Eldraine with an average price tag of 55 cents, the market price of 41 cents, a foil, $1.16 US, 85 cent euro or $1.50 here in Canada, depending on where you're buying it. It's 3,975 sales this week. Upon closer inspection of this card as an instant, it is one black for an instant spell that says, until end of turn, target creature you control gains whenever this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped, under its owner's control and create a wicked roll token attached to it. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one when this aura, aura is put into the graveyard. Each opponent loses one life. Guys, it's a great card. It saves your creatures. Things like using this with uh, Shieldred are totally crazy, so keep that stuff in mind. I, again, it's super cheap, but seeing cards like this cost more than bulk rares from Wilds of Aldrin is what's freaking players out. These kind of values are something Wizards of the Coast is intending on and hoping to roll into future Master Series products. They're just laying the framework for which cards will have value over the next 3-4 years. This card is going to be one of those cards that sees a lot of play, like others we've seen already in the video. These are all intended to be cards that have value, so I would not trade these in if you have them. I would actually hold on to them and use them and play with them, and then about a year from now, trade them in knowing that they will get reprinted very soon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the number four card this week, and that is Troll of Keswick Dumb, and that of course is from Lord of the Rings, with 4,102 sales this week. The average price is still trending down ever so slightly, just like a, a one or two cents less than last week. It has an average price of $1.23, the market price is 96 cents, a foil, $3.70, 68 cents euro to get this card in your house, $2.50 here in Canada, and just like the generous Ent, this is another cycling one. This is the Swamp Cycling card, and of course you get it late in the game, you got a big 6-5 beastie that at least can throw it as a blocker there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the number three card this week, and that is going to be Utopia Sprawl, and that's Wilds of Eldrain Enchanting Tales with 4,200 sales. Now, I'll be honest, I did not know this card. I mean, I read it when Wilds of Eldrain came out, but before this, this is a time where I just wasn't really paying attention to cards, so I didn't know this one existed. We'll get into it here. The average price is 50 cents, the market price is 36 cents, 73 cent euro to get this card into your house. Here in Canada, $1.00. Now, it is a one green enchantment aura that says Enchant Forest. As Utopia Sprawl enters the battlefield, choose a color. Whenever Enchanted Forest is tapped for mana, its controller adds an additional one mana of the chosen color. This is pretty nice. I like this again for mana fixing. I actually appreciate the artwork. I like it better than the original, which is very unusual for me. It has that Kamigawa uh, Neon Dynasty kind of vibe, you know, with the whole background, like a mystical, you see like the cities in the background there. I like it, okay? Just, it appeals to me. It's the whole fantasy thing. It's, it's just what the Moxman likes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the number two card this week. And that is Up the Beanstalk, Wilds of Eldrain, with 4,426 sales. As you can see throughout this video, guys, the singles market of all these cards are selling exceptionally well week over week. And so many of Wilds of Eldrain cards are now coming to the forefront. But do you notice they're uncommons and commons? Keep that in mind, like we talked about. They're going to get reprinted in future sets. Now, the average price for this card is $3.12. The market price is $2.87. And of course, it has this upward swing you can see there on the screen. A foil is $4.15. And it's €1.64 to get this card into your house here in Canada. Five bucks. Now, Up the Beanstalk is an enchantment for one green, one generic. And it says, when Up the Beanstalk enters the battlefield... And whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, you draw a card. Okay, so when it enters the battlefield, and whenever you cast spells with 5 or greater. So it comes to the battlefield, you draw a card. You cast creatures with, you know, 5 or greater, you draw a card. But I want you to think about this. With even cards like the 
Eternal Wanderer, you could basically just bounce this every turn and, and get to be able to draw cards. There's crazy stuff you can do already with the card at that cheap of a mana ability, but the fact that when you get those big beasties out later, it's going to give you even more rewards. It shows you why there's an upswing for the card and a surge in the pricing. This card will die down though. The meta for this card, the ability to play it, it will die down. It's just going to take time. So be aware that in the next 90 days, the glut of cards that are still going to come onto the market as players cycle things out is going to be pretty big. Now, we've waited long enough. Do we have a new number one or are we still going to have Lord of the Rings at the top? You've waited long enough and here it is. Lorien Revealed at number one again with a surge in sales. 4,531 sales. It has an average price tag of $3.30 US. The market price is $2.99. A foil is $5.99 and it's two euro eight cent to get this card into your house. Five bucks here in Canada, but most of you'll see the foils for like eight, nine dollars. This is what we're talking about with cards like this. It's that island cycling ability for all the people who love to play blue, but you also get to draw cards. It's not a creature that can just be killed instantly, but it's a thing that will let you draw more cards and give you more abilities. This is something that really speaks to people. And in commander games and stuff, when you start getting the amulets out and lowering casting costs, stuff like this can be invaluable. And it's really showing form with the pricing and the amount of sales we've seen. So I want you guys to think about this. We're here at the end of the video. I showed you all those cards. You can see commons, uncommons, purposely at higher values, way more than rares. This is something we haven't seen for a while, but it is definitely a plan and action of what they hope to do in the future with a reprint set where they can say, these commons and uncommons, look at the value they have. They haven't been reprinted for like three years, guys. We've added these in because they have such high value on the secondary market. That's what they're hoping to do. They lay their framework out like it's a blueprint for anyone to look at now. You just have to see the signs of it and it's just laid out in front of you. And by the way, I know right now I'm on vacation. If you guys are here this far in the video, you know I'm on vacation right now. I am not here. I'm on my anniversary. I managed to get these videos done. I really hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to slam down some comments. And of course, if you're new to the channel, you just happen to find this today. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys can um, join the channel, hit that subscribe button, help me get closer to 20,000. We're down to what, like 1,200 subscribers to go. We're only 200 subscribers away till I put out the 19K. When we get to 19K, I put out the video explaining what we're doing for the 20K party. It's going to be epic. Can't wait. Um, pretty exciting stuff for anyone who's a, who's a patron, a viewer. It's going to be fun. So thanks a lot for hanging out with me. Thanks for being here. Uh, if Mrs. Mox is watching this, happy anniversary and stuff. Hope you're having a good time with me. You let me live. It's great. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the, of course, reserve list hot 10. But remember, there will be no live stream as I won't be there. That's that's just the way it is. I'll see you guys soon. Big shout out and thank you to the fantastic patrons of the channel who support me each and every day, every day of the year some of you guys are here. So thanks again to that amazing support I get from my patrons. You guys rock. See you guys soon. Have an awesome day. I'm not supposed to be here today.